the last lesson here. So you will be looking at a chapter test sometime that first week we get back after break. My apologies. Okay? It is what it is. You'll have to. Okay. I put 12. So we are looking at derivatives of inverse trig functions. So we know the derivatives of our six trig functions, right? Yeah. Sine, cosine, tangent, and then our cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Those are derivatives that you supposedly have memorized. Okay? Now, what we've got to work at is derivatives of our inverse trig functions, such as sine inverse of x, because they are totally different. Okay. Now, we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at how we can create these. Okay. Inevitably, they're going to be something you're going to want to be familiar with. I think we usually talk about memorizing a couple of them, not necessarily all of them, because a couple of them just don't usually show up. So... Okay, so in this final lesson for this unit, we can take the derivative of an inverse trig function using the ratios of a right triangle and implicit differentiation. Okay, we'll start with sine inverse and let's derive. So, use the Pythagorean theorem, properties of right triangle trigonometry, and implicit differentiation to derive the inverse trig function formulas. Okay, so we are trying to find the derivative of sine inverse of x. Now, we don't know the derivative of sine inverse of x, so it's not like I can just say, oh, y prime is this. Now, what does an inverse function do? An inverse takes your x and your y and it flips them, yes? So, one thing we can do here is sine inverse of x equaling y. We can take our x and our y and flip them. And so, we can write the statement, yes, sine of y equals x. Whatever. Okay. And after that, do we just leave out the inverse? Right, because we took our x and our y and our, we flipped them, okay. we essentially did the inverse, so it's okay. no longer an inverse function. Or maybe I should say we undid the inverse there. I don't know which way you want to say it, but... Okay, so with that idea, we're going to... Let's go ahead and use our implicit differentiation here. Meaning, I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. And I'm going to write out a brief note before I actually do this that we're going to take the derivative specifically with respect to x. So it's d dx, so the derivative of sine y with respect to x, and then d dx, the derivative of x with respect to x. Oof, tongue twister. Okay. What do you know about the derivative of sine y? So sine y, dy, dx. Yeah. The derivative of sine of something is indeed cosine of something times the derivative of something. Well, since it's a y, the derivative of y is just 1 and then dy, dx. And what is the derivative of x with respect to x? 1. 1. Just with what variable you're taking it in respect to. Because if we were taking this in res with respect to y, we wouldn't have the dy dx here. Uh -huh. So you are, you, and you're always working in terms of one variable. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, if we solve this, do I want to do it that way? Yeah. If we solve this for dy dx, because our job is to find the derivative of sine inverse x, right? So my job is to find dy dx. What is dy dx equal to? Okay, 1 over cosine y. No, not going that way this time. Okay. Now, here's the deal. I'm trying to, I need the derivative of sine inverse. And to say that it's 1 over cosine y, I can't really have a y within my derivative. Okay. So this is where we're going to talk about right triangles. Okay. So the idea here 
is we need to use our right triangle to find the cosine of angle Y. Okay. Um, trying to think about what I want to do here. Okay. So right here is angle Y. Yes. What do you remember about cosine? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Fair enough? And so cosine of y is going to be what? x over 1 over x. x squared over 1 over x squared over 1. I thought adjacent was 1 across. Oh, no, that's opposite. Dang it. Now I'm going to have a Mario wasn't here. <laughs> okay, so cosine of y, cosine is the adjacent, so opposite is the one that doesn't touch it, adjacent is the one that does touch it. So square root of 1 minus x squared over the hypotenuse of 1. So if we go and fill this in here, let's see, how do I want it? I guess I'll say, yeah, okay dy dx is 1 over, what was cosine y? The square root of 1 minus x squared. And that is your derivative of sine inverse x. You know, that is not that bad. It wasn't, was it? No. Okay. Now, what you need to remember here, okay, um, sorry, my brain is taking a moment. Okay, this triangle is already labeled for us. That's where my brain needs to go. This triangle is already labeled for us, correct? Mm -hmm. This triangle was labeled for us based on this right here. That right there saying we had the statement sine of y equals x, right? So sine of y is equal to x over 1. So here's y, right? Mm -hmm. x over 1 is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So that's where the x and 1 came from. Where did the square root of 1 minus x squared come from? Oh, a squared Pythagorean theorem, right? Like if you oh, think yeah. of this as one of your sides, so like if we say x squared plus, if I just call this b right now, b squared equals 1 squared. Does your Pythagorean theorem make sense there? So you would have b squared equals 1 minus x squared, and so b is the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, sorry, I kind of I should have done that at the time. My brain wasn't processing because they had this triangle already filled out for us. But the idea here is that you could set up the triangle based on this information and then use it when you get down here. Are we okay with that a little bit? Okay, and here's the deal: Are you going to necessarily? You might in homework, but long term, are you going to have to work these out again? Not really. It's going to be more about knowing how to use it, which is what we'll talk more about tomorrow, I believe, is how to use them. Yeah. Okay. Given y equals cosine inverse of x, find the derivative of cosine inverse x. So what do we know? Okay, according to our inverses, cosine of y equals x. Now, I'm going to pause this time. That information right there relates specifically to our triangle, yes? The cosine of angle Y is equal to X, which is X over 1. Do you see it? Yep. Cosine of angle Y is X over 1 adjacent over hypotenuse. Where did this guy come from? 
Yeah, your Pythagorean theorem. You can think a squared plus x squared equals 1 squared. So a squared equals 1 minus x squared. a is the square root of 1 minus x squared, just like above, right? Okay. Now, we are ready to differentiate, which I think is what Hannah wanted to do when I slowed her down. So we're going to do the derivative of cosine y and the derivative of x. Both of these are going to be with respect to x. So what is the derivative of cosine y? Negative, negative sine y times d y. Okay, so the cosine of something is negative sine of something times the derivative of something. The derivative of y we write as dy dx. The derivative of x is 1. Can you go ahead and solve that? dy dx is going to be equal to the negative of 1 over sine y. Okay. Can't have a y, so now we're going to go over here. The sine of y, what do we know about sine? Opposite over hypotenuse. Here's my angle y, so what is opposite over hypotenuse? Square root of 1 minus x squared over 1. So, we're going to be able to say that the derivative of cosine x is the negative of 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay? So the difference between sine inverse and cosine inverse is the difference of a sign, right? A positive negative sign. Okay. And shall we talk tangent? Okay. Given that y equals tangent inverse x, find the derivative of tangent inverse x. So what do we know? Okay. We have the statement tangent of y equals x. If your brain wants to, I'm going to show the triangle real quick. That means tangent of y is equal to x over 1. What do we know about tangent? Opposite over adjacent. So there's your x and your 1, yes? Does Pythagorean theorem make sense then? You would have 1 squared plus x squared equals c squared. So c is going to be the square root of 1 plus x squared. Okay. So we're going to take the derivative of tangent y equals x. So we're going to differentiate the tangent of y, and we're going to differentiate the tan or x. Sorry, say the tangent of x. I'm making things up here. Okay, what is the derivative of tangent of something? Secant squared of something, so secant squared y times dy dx. And what is the derivative of x? 1. Okay. Solve. So I'm going to have dy dx is equal to 1 over secant squared y. Um, would it, would it not? I'm debating. Would it be helpful here to, instead of calling that secant squared, call it cosine squared? In other words, instead of saying it's 1 over secant squared. It would just be 
cosine, cosine, cosine square? Probably. I mean, it might be easier. I didn't do that in my notes. So I'm trying to figure out if there's a reason. But, I mean, you could think that this is the same as saying dy dx equals cosine squared y because that is the reciprocal function, right? So you could think that. Okay. Regardless, let me ask you while we're here. I'll, you know, do this either way. What do you know about secant? It's what over what? Okay, because... Mm. Uh -uh. Disagree. You know what's funny? We just linked it to cosine, right? Yes. So cosine would be adjacent over. In my notes, I have written down that secant is hypotenuse over opposite for some reason. I know it's not right, but that's what I wrote I at the time. The sign lines, so the, I yeah. The okay, so Probably. if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, this is hypotenuse over adjacent. Over adjacent. Oof, man. It's okay. Long day. It's only halfway through. Yeah. So if we're doing that, then we're doing square root of 1 plus x squared over... One, right? Okay. So, and I guess I think I did leave it. Maybe this is why. But I left it as this, as the one over secant squared in my notes. So, if we continue and do this, how do I? This is one over. So, secant y is officially the square root of one plus x squared over 1, right? Quantity squared. Because it was secant squared, right? Which if you clean this up, 1 on top is just a 1. Bottom. Well, square root of 1 plus x squared over 1 is just going to be the square root. And what happens when we square the square root? It's just the 1 plus x squared. And cosine you would have gotten there just fine, too. Okay. It wasn't actually, secant didn't end up being as bad as I thought it would be. Okay. Now, what's at the top of the next page? Whoa. The, the formulas. Oh, wait. Isn't that the, on like circles and it's the arc of the... Well, oh, or how about... Sine inverse, another way to write sine inverse is to say arc sine. So sine inverse of x is the same as arc sine of x. Not the best place to write that, but I taught that last year in pre-calc. It's just been a minute, right? So sine inverse, arc sine, same thing, just different ways of saying it. Okay, you'll notice she's going to go back and forth here. But these first three formulas are the formulas we just derived, aren't they? Okay. Now, this U prime stuff, that just says times the derivative. That just is the chain rule part. So really what you need to know is the, there's a one over there, right? If there's no chain rule. I don't know if I want those ones in there or not. I don't know. But that's all just saying the chain rule. If nothing else goes up there, it's always going to be a 1. Here's the three we didn't do. Cosecant, secant, and cotangent. You'll see why. They're a little trickier, aren't they? Okay. So um, we don't necessarily use the absolute value unless necessary, but these are like 1 over the variable times the variable square root of the variable squared minus 1. And then you've got cotangent here. Usually what they say, I think, is to know sine and tangent, sine inverse and tangent inverse. But my thing is, if you know sine and tangent, sine and tangent, you also know cosine, because it's just a sine different from, a sine different from sine? <laughs> it's just the negative or the opposite of sine inverse. Okay. So, I assume tomorrow, 
we will work on some examples of how to use these and how the chain rule comes into play. Because that's the big thing with these is the chain rule and what all it does. Okay?